give a lot of credit to the art designer Linda, you know, who has been really working on this, and she was the one that made it so beautiful. We just gave the concept, but you know, she really did a great job. Okay, now I will zoom in now. All right, now this is a seven character duplet, Qi Yan Dui Lian. Okay, all right, and uh, I read it in Mandarin. You will start laughing, and let me translate afterwards. Right, I, I will ignore the one in the middle because the one in the middle always something good, you know,、uh, you know something you know, which I will do it later. But it's the one on the left. We start on the left. I、oh, know. So on the right, right, right. Yeah, right. Yang zi bu jiao ru yang lu. Okay. Yang ni bu jiao ru yang lu zhu. Okay. So when I translated this,、uh, Xiao Chu was just almost rolling and、uh, rolling on the ground on the floor because it was so funny. All right. So this is the translation. Raising a son without educating him is like raising a donkey. Raising a daughter without educating her is like raising a pig. Okay. So I'm not quite sure whether you like it because it covers the both sexes and quite fair, right? <laughs> so that was what sparked off this idea. Why don't we then translate it so everybody can really appreciate? Okay. And this is not the only funny one. There are a few others, but there are many others that are of great cultural and historical significance. Now, then, I just want to quote、uh, because other than the cultural side, artistic side, I think what really、um, struck us, my wife and I,、uh, was that actually at the end of the, I just want to just have a long quotable quote. At the end of the guided tour by Xiao Chu, we have gained a greater sense of appreciation and awe of the history and culture embodied in this ancestral home, which was built over two centuries ago. We also came away with greater appreciation of the unique Peranakan culture, an eclectic combination of Chinese, Malay, and Western cultures. Molded over the past five hundred years, first in Malacca, then Penang and Singapore, also known as the Nyonya and Baba culture, the food and daily attire, especially of the women, have adapted almost fully to the Malay culture. The language used was mostly Malay, but later more English. Yet the furniture, the home decor. And artifacts are definitely Chinese. Okay, shown here is Mrs. Tan Kiong An, Xiao Chu's great grandmother. Okay, in a, a real, a real Nyonya, hundred percent Nyonya. And some of you actually came today in your Nyonya attire, very befitting. Yeah. More importantly, we were actually struck by the customary practices. Adherence to ancestral remembrance and value systems, which are very Chinese indeed, a combination and reflection of Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. In fact, we were quite taken aback when Xiao Chu told us how he has been dutifully returning to the ancestral home for prayers for main Chinese festivals every year. Such as the Lunar New Year, the Qingming, Qingming, right, and、uh, the Hungry Ghost Festival, as well as the death anniversaries of all her direct ancestors, you know, from the first、uh, Tan He Kuan, who arrived in Malacca in 1771, to her grandfather, her father, and even a grand、uh, uncle who had only one son who had passed away. So she carried this out as a duty, personal duty, many times a year, you know, going from KL to Malacca. And this is, in my opinion, most remarkable for someone who speaks impeccable English and high school Malay, as he said, but with no knowledge of the Chinese language. Even my own parents and their contemporaries who arrived 
as seen care, you know, in the 20s and the 30s. Uh, very Chinese educated. They had not followed such Chinese rituals anywhere near to the Kali family. Not to mention my own generation who were born here after World War II and grew up educated in Chinese schools. We did not even follow that, okay? Siok Chu said that it was her father, Dun Siu Xing, who drilled into her and her siblings the need to strictly practice Chinese values and customs, while he himself inherited such a commitment from his own father, Dun Cheng Long. We, have, we were really impressed because members of the Chinese educated community in Malaysia have generally perceived the Tan family, especially Tun Siu Sin, as being very westernized and very Baba, with little roots in Chinese culture. But what we saw was contrary to our you know, conventional perception. And that's why we felt that it was actually very important to bring out this book, you know, to showcase how cultures merge and yet certain core values from the ancestors have been kept until today. So I ended up with this family portrait and for you to guess which one is Tan Siok Chu. Which one? The little one. I don't know. Let Siok Chu tell you. So Siok Chu will be the next speaker and I'll leave this slide on first. Okay? Now, finally, uh, when uh, we have some drafts of this book, I actually brought them to China, to Beijing, to be checked by some scholars on the language, you know, because we were no, not really experts, we were just enthusiasts. And then we also showed it to a few scholars in Malaysia. And the comment was that, hey, you are the former president of Gerakan, and yet you are promoting a book on the two former presidents of MCA. <laughs> So I say, why not? I say, you know, appreciation of culture, history, and heritage should know should know no political bounds.